Yeah, testing, testing. Uh, it's a microphone. Hello, hello, the internet. Um, I am making this video because of two YouTube comments that I received. The first of which was somebody saying, will you make another update video? It has been over two years. That's coming from YouTube user Daniel L. Uh, and I responded, yes, Daniel, I will make another YouTube video. And then <laughs> we receive a second comment. Now, this is the important one. This is from somebody who calls themselves Raffi. Raffi says, Hi, I was watching you back then and even tried to create my own video blog channel, but I was and I am still too shy. Then I created an actual channel with some old music. After so many years, I found it brave in me that I'm writing you my first comment ever. Okay, to end with this introduction, I'm writing you because I have just realized how much we have in common. It's crazy. We both had problems with our sexuality. I'm bi now. We both did something stupid to get handsome boys. I have posted some very erotic pics of myself when I was 14. I also did that. I also posted erotic photos of myself when I was 14. And I still do. Nothing's changed, really. Hard habit to break, I suppose. <laughs> um, it never got it never got me any handsome boys, though. Mostly just the, mostly just the old milk boy crowd. Um, and then uh, he continues to say, We both ended school without trying really hard. We both went on to study computer science. We both learned programming. By the way, I'm a terrible programmer, so am I am also very bad at programming. Um, we are both trying to create games. We both even created games with some retro, well, oh, and created some retro games. I'm using C, C++, SDL, Allegro, Unreal Engine, etc. Now I'm trying Java to create something simple game. We both, and we both had, and I hope still have, the same sense of humor. There was, when you're some of your videos, sorry, I'm really bad at reading. I'm kind of realizing this now. I haven't actually tried to read something in a pretty, <laughs> read something out loud in a pretty long time. But uh, actually, oh yeah, yeah. Then he says, um, uh, of course, we have some differences. You are like a hero to me, brave and confident. I'm a shy loser, afraid of people and still alone. And while I'm not talking hero without reason, Maybe this will be crazy and you won't believe me, but you actually saved my life. When uh, I was f first on your channel, I was suffering from a terrible depression and I wanted to die. Everyone at my school picked on me and called me gay, and, uh, and I was laughing at that, trying to turn it into a joke, but at home I was crying. And then I saw you and your funny videos, and I laughed for the first real time since, I don't know, a year maybe. And of course, I had a huge crush on you, and then there's lots of faces, emotive faces. And then it says, I shouldn't be saying this on the internet. And my first comment should be hilarious. So I think I still have a crush on you. And then there's another nice, sweet little face there. And then it says, I guess I will have a little depression again. But it's okay. I have little depressions every year. For me, you will always be the best person in the world I have never met. But maybe someday we'll be working in some big companies and have some common project. And that will be hilarious. Sorry for the long block test with errors. I hope you're not mad and embarrassed by my immature comment. I waited three days in my notepad because I was thinking, should I post it or not? By the way, two questions. Are you working as a programmer in some company? Or maybe, are you a freelancer and game creator? Can I help somehow? How tall are you? Because you seem to be really tall. Thanks for everything. Best regards, Rafi. Um, I'm six foot two. <laughs> but that's not the important that's not the important thing um i i wanted to make this video because um raffi this w what you've said th thank you so much for um for this message and all of the things that you've said this message uh this video sorry is kind of more i want to cover a broader topic which is like a lot have of people have reached out to me um over the last several years really it's been a decade since I started making these videos, which is pretty crazy to think about. Um, so I suppose over the last decade, I have really gotten a lot of messages from young kind of boys about my age or, or a little bit younger, um, saying that uh, basically that they were a little bit gay and that um, the they were feeling really bad and going through really difficult times and having sort of like gay induced uh, depression as a result of this and you know circumstances bullying all of that kind of stuff um and that seeing my videos and that seeing that i was also kind of gay um and was seemingly fine 
uh, kind of like helped them a lot. Um, and it's weird. It's really weird for me getting these messages um, because like, you know, it's, it's hard to not have that go to your ego, right? Like when you make YouTube, making YouTube videos, doing this kind of stuff, like externalizing yourself in this way, um, it's sort of like just an uh, ego fueling party, the whole thing. Like you post a video and people get comments, uh, you know, and you're like, oh my God, look at all these comments, like, and you feel so good and you feel buoyed by that. And it's like, people care about you. Um, and so when you then start to get messages from people saying that, like, you saved their life or that, you know, you, you helped them a lot during a really hard time, like, that immediately just goes straight to the ego as well, right? I read that and I'm like, oh, look at look at me, Mr. Faggot on the internet saving lives, you know, or whatever. Um, but it is, like, it's, it, it is meaningful getting those messages, you know? Um, but it's also really strange for me because, like, you know, I never really, um, there was never a time when my sexuality was really of a whole lot of consequence to me whatsoever, you know? And I think it's just through, um, the privilege of being raised in, like, a supportive family and then, like, a really progressive schooling system. The primary school and the high school that I went to were both extremely, you know, forward-thinking. Um, and so I never felt any, uh, like, hang-ups or trepidations or anxiety about my sexuality at all it was just kind of like when it started to um come over me the thought that maybe I might also be interested in men I was just kind of like huh like whatever and it was just a thing that I did like you're that age at 14 you're already like all about the the genitals like <laughs> that's just kind of the thing about being 14 is you're just all about the genitals and like so when it shifted from being all about the girl genitals to being like all about all the genitals it really didn't seem like a big deal when that happened um and I still feel that way about myself you know like I I like my <laughs> my sexual orientation is um faggot little bit of a faggot that's what I've decided I'm gonna reclaim that one uh because like you know really I for the most part, um, I'm interested in, in women and sort of the relationships in my life that I pursue tend to be women. But also, like, you know, you just want to fuck a man sometimes. Like, who doesn't at some point <laughs> just want to fuck a man, you know? And so you do. Um, but really, like, beyond that, I don't think we should be trying to build too much of our identities around our sexuality, you know? Like, it's um, in the same way as, like, when you see, like, some you know, burly, like, muscle-bound dude who's, like, all about the fact that he's heterosexual. He's constantly talking about how he wants to get up on the pussy and, like, just all of this gross, weird, predatory towards women, like, misogynistic kind of shit. And you're like, ugh, that's gross. And what you're being repulsed by in that situation is, like, too much heterosexuality, you know? Um, and, like, I kind of feel like the same thing exists within me even for, like, I used to think that I was homophobic because when I see somebody who's really, really camp, really gay, um, there would be this weird little bit in me that was like, ugh, like that. And I, I th originally I just thought that was bigotry, <laughs> but it's not actually, luckily. It turns out that the thing that um, gives me that kind of feeling inside me is like when I perceive that somebody is building too much of their self-identity, too much of their self-worth around their sexuality. And ultimately, like, I feel like you've got to be, what are you leaving behind in that situation, right? Like, you only have a certain amount of self, a certain amount of time, a certain amount of soul in the world. Like, if you're carving off this big chunk of your personality to be dedicated to your sexuality, if that's, like, being a man who's, like, really all about that pussy or being a gay guy who's, like, oh, just so fancy and gay, like what parts of yourself are you not exploring when you just pick an off-the-shelf archetype of character that you decide to slot into, you know? Um, and so this message, like, uh, from from Rafi and all of these messages that I get, like, I, I really am glad. Like, I, it's, it's complete sincerity. Like, I'm really, really glad that there was a period in your life when you were feeling scared or you were feeling uncertain or you were feeling like you didn't... you 
didn't deserve confidence like you didn't deserve arrogance <laughs> and then you saw me just like rocking and being fully confident fully arrogant like regardless you know I'm, I'm really glad that that helped some people um and then my message to those same people and then also I guess it would be a question I suppose is like when you stopped being shaped by your sexuality and it's fearful way like when the uh, after you kind of hopefully have exited that period in your life where your sexuality was taking up this huge unpleasant chunk of your brain because you were f worried about being gay like i would just like to encourage you to find a life for yourself now where you don't feel like the the person that you want to fuck like the genitals that you're that you're interested in like that that has to then dictate your interests or dictate the things that you're passionate about in life or dictate your direction or the way that you interact or the way that you act anything like i i love sexuality you know like <laughs> i'm all down with it you know like I'm, I'm right there with it like it's great everyone has a great time sex is fantastic but like i am just worried about us getting to a point in society where t too much of our selves is being dictated by our sexual preference by our gender and that closes doors um that might otherwise be open for you for you to explore other interests explore other things that you might be interested in you know and just because like i suck a dick every now and then doesn't mean that i could like not want to be into muscle cars or whatever or construction or you know like what whatever there's a classic masculine interest like just just figure out what you're really into. Do the things that you're excited about. Try and leave the anxiety behind and just follow your individuality, whatever that might be. But uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't like to, um, I wouldn't like to see you fall down the same path that like so many terrifying masculine men and so many ultra campy uh, gay boys have fallen down where they're just kind of, their whole existence becomes dominated by that, you know? Um, that's really what I have to say on the topic in terms of my own life um yeah I don't know like I I, I got divorced um I still have two children they're six now they're in their second year of primary school which is pretty wild um yeah I guess I'll see you in a couple years <laughs>